look forward to the first Sunday of every month, and you're going to be hearing from a number of different people this morning. And I'm just going to start that off. Uh, for us this morning with Home Missions, you're going to be hearing some things about what's happening around the world, but uh, we've recently finished our SHAPE series here at Faith, and um, we've encouraged individuals to discover their SHAPE and to find opportunities to plug in, and as a result, over 50 individuals, both kids and adults, have served so far this summer in eight different events and programs. Don't, don't sound so excited. That's 50 people that were involved this summer. That's wonderful. So just a, a few highlights. We were so happy to have almost two pe two, 200 people attend our block party on McLaughlin Street at the beginning of last month. And this was a great opportunity to connect with those in the area, especially families who've never attended our programs before. This summer, we have also started a number of new programs for students living on McLaughlin Street. And one of these programs was piano lessons, something that these students could not have done otherwise. We provide programs to seniors in our community every week, year round, and the summer is no exception. These programs give opportunity to build communities for the community for those who may otherwise be isolated. And we're happy to include new friends, such as one lady who has not been out of her apartment in two years. And um, she started coming out to her socials, and that was a those were small steps for some big changes in her life. You may have heard us talking about serve opportunities in our community, and we were honored to be part of the Well and Float Fest. Uh, since it's uh, it's great, since this great community started uh, many a few years ago, and you'll be hearing about other ways that you can serve in the community. So just be listening over the next few months as how you could be serving in the community. It's never too early to learn to serve. And some kids decorated and filled 50 snack bags, which were donated to Open Arms Mission for their upcoming VBS. We would love for you to get involved with these community programs so we can continue to make a lasting imprint in the lives of these students and the seniors in our community. So please see me or Rylan this morning at the Connect Center following the service and we can help you find your place to serve. Even a small commitment can make a big difference. Thank you. Okay, hey, next we're going to have Sarah Rom come up, and she has a, her God story, a report to share with you. Let's give her a welcome. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> um, so... I'll share Psalm 5, 11, 12. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. Surely, Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. In September, I went to YWAM Youth with a Mission in Muskoka for a DTS, Discipleship Training School. We lived in a house for three months and had worship, guest speakers, small group, one-on-ones, and evangelism every week. There is a huge presence of God there, and it is so amazing. This house itself used to be a place where drug abuse happened, but God loves to transform places. And so this place is now where students go to dive deeper with God. What used to be the dark spot in the community is now the lighthouse. During those three months, God touched us in unique ways. After one lecture on the Holy Spirit, I was crying and crying. But that evening, God met me in my room, and I was laughing and laughing for two hours. I had never known the joy of the Lord like that before. Abby was another student who God did a miracle in her life. She was allergic to pineapple, nuts, and latex. 
When she was going to bed, God gave her a dream or a vision of this bowl of fruit with pineapples and things she couldn't eat. She believed she was healed. When her parents came down to see her, they videotaped her eating the pineapple for the first time in nine years. She was completely healed. Praise the Lord. Our outreach team of 14 people went to Cambodia for two months. And then we had an extended outreach to Thailand for six of us to go on for a month. We saw God work in so many ways, but one thing that really stood out to me was how God kept opening the door. In, one, in Cambodia, we were on a missionary walk, and we stopped on the side of the road, and you could see that the road kept going, and there was open fields all around. We prayed for the people out there in the villages that we couldn't see and didn't know about. While this was happening, Jen, a missionary from the Philippines who, wa- who we were staying with, along with two teammates, went into this house and met a chief there. This chief asked them to come and start churches in nine villages that had never heard the gospel before. We got to meet the mayor who gave Jen written permission to plant churches. God is so incredible. In Thailand, we stayed at Abba House, a place where girls can live and get an education who would otherwise be at risk for being in the sex trade. While we were there, we visited Agape House and met Avis, who is the founder and at the age of 71 is still running this orphanage for children. When, we, when she started, she said she was taking care of children dying of HIV AIDS, but now these children can get the medication that they need, and she says she is taking care of children living with HIV AIDS. We also went to a juvenile detention center where nine people got baptized and others accepted Jesus for the first time. Seven years ago, you could hardly get in there, but God is moving. We got to encourage by men at a rehab center, hand out gospel tracts at a university, and give away comic Bibles at a hospital and market. The people were so open to receive. A word that was spoken over me before we left Muskoka for this outreach was, the Lord is your shield. He is surrounding you and protecting you. I was a bit naive at first, thinking, great, nothing bad is going to happen to me. But God showed me that he is my shield because I need a shield. Things will happen and put pressure on me. But because God is my shield, I can stand strong and keep running the race God has set before me. On our first flight from Toronto to Shanghai, in the last 20 minutes before landing, I had a seizure. When I came to, the plane was mostly empty and the... Chinese paramedics were on board. We couldn't get a hold of our health insurance, but a teammate was a nurse, and I felt fine. So we signed a paper, and I slept on some suitcases for a few hours before our next flight. God's peace was so amazing through the whole thing. Incident number two. I wanted to do a kind deed and turn the light off in one of the shacks where we taught English. So I pulled the plug out and accidentally touched what goes into the wall. And my hand was shaking for a while, as I felt electricity run through me. I slept for a day after that. Incident number three. (laughs) I was playing soccer with the kids at Jen's, and we banged legs. I never saw my ankle swell up so fast, so large. I got an x-ray, and it showed it wasn't broken, but badly sprained. They said it would take about three weeks to heal. After one week of hopping around, We were watching a movie about Todd White and seeing so many miracles. A teammate put her hand on my ankle and started praying. I could feel heat in my ankle and I started moving it a bit. The rest of the team prayed and I started walking and running and jumping. It didn't hurt anymore. (laughs) And the next day, I played soccer with the kids at the orphanage. (laughs) Incident number four. It was our last day at Jen's. I was going to take a shower like we always did outside. I poured buckets of water over me, and as I reached for my soap, I touched the pole and got shocked. (laughs) Our leaders prayed for me, and I felt okay. I was going to take a shower and not touch that pole. I dumped more water over me, and I grabbed my soap, and I screamed. I could feel the electricity grab me. I lay down on a mat, and they prayed for me. They turned the power off, 
and found out there was a loose wire that, with the water pump. I slept in the next day, but other than that, I was fine. <laughs> and the team was amazed how well I was doing. God is my shield and my strength. On our way home, we left a house in Thailand at three and got to the airport at six. We, could, we couldn't check in our bags till 10, so we ate and then got in line. They wouldn't check our bags in because our flight was to China and we would be there a half an hour too long. So we would need a visa, but we didn't have that. The plane took off without us and we were stranded. Some of us were praising God while we waited for our leaders to figure it out. We slept under the escalators in the airport and in the morning we found out our directors were able to get us new flights for the next day. With this new flight, we had a two-hour layover in Korea where we met a former student and staff from Waiwe Muskoka who blessed us with snacks and Bible verses. To think we were not supposed to be there, that wasn't the original plan, but God changed the plan and made it something much better. On April 3rd, 2019, I graduated from Waiwe Muskoka. Five years earlier on that day, I had had a seizure for the first time. A day that I thought was a defeat, God turned into a victory. Thank you. Thank you so much. We want to... The scripture is this, Isaiah 62.10. Go through. Go through the gates. Prepare the way for the people. Build up. Build up a highway. Remove stones. Raise a banner for the nations. Isaiah 62.10. I'm just going to grab it really quick. This is going to be the shortest message you've ever heard me preach. But when summer... Uh, was uh, obviously she wasn't going to be able to hear, be here working to the Silver Birch's report. God just laid this on my heart. And uh, so first, it just says go. And I, I began to think I was going to ask, but I have it. They already explained some of it, and Sarah explained some of it. That, and, and, and I encourage you, if you have conversation with Catherine or, or Sarah Rom or Sarah Ricker, I was going to say Sarah R, but I can't even, Sarah R, Sarah R.I., Sarah... Our, oh. But uh, ask them about when God asked them to go. They'll tell you. They can remember it. Whether it's 12 years old or the little girl, they'll remember. God still says go. And, and I'm telling you, it's in a service like this, God told me go. God was putting a call in my life. And, and I, before we leave, that's the other thing. We're going to pray for them, but I, I'm going to ask you before I finish this, this short message, I'm going to ask you, is God asking you to go? If he is, then everything else you do is disobedience until you go. Or it's preparation for the going. He still says go. It's the Matthew 25. He says go and make disciples. I love your statement, Sarah. Sarah. I'm meant to be overseas. You're doing what God created you to do. Go through the gates. Now, when I saw this go through, I had written down. Why? Because we need to persevere. Because going, we would love to think it's roses and paved paths, but we know, and we've heard today, it is not. It is not all roses and paved paths. There are obstacles, there are pitfalls, there are potholes, there are challenges, there is opposition. And so you need to press on. Whether it's incident one, two, three, four, <laughs> or challenges with political unrest, visas. But God is a God who opens doors that no one can shut and shuts doors no one else can open. So if he wants you in a country, you will have a visa. But you need to go through. You need to go through. Make a way for the people. We serve a God, it was already said pray, but we serve a God who is a way maker. We serve Jesus who is a way maker. And I want to be like Jesus. And I need to be a way maker. I love this part because I was raised this way. This is my fa grandfather raised my father and his, and his siblings this way and who has raised us this way. Find a way. Just find a way. 
My grandpa didn't have much to do with book smarts. He feels like if they didn't have it in a book, they don't know what to do. He says, you just got to find a way. Just find a way. And God is a way maker where there seems to be no way. But it's interesting, he also asks us to make a way. Make a way. Why is it there are people that aren't finding the way? I don't know why, but I'm going to find out why and find out a way to how to get them there. Why is our nation so closed off to God? I don't know all why, and everybody can give you reasons here and there, but I don't know why it is or why it isn't. You can read books and articles on it. All I know is we need to find a way to introduce people to someone named Jesus who changes lives. He's got to find a way somehow. Why might people be going by the gates? Why might people not be coming in? Why might people be driving by? We need to clear the path prayer and written down how important it is to prepare the way with prayer pray before you come to church pray before you go to work pray before you make your kids lunches pray before you send them off to school pray before they come home pray before you see your wife pray before you go to bed pray before you go to your relatives reunion pray before you see your friends again for that get together Pray with the people you contact. Pray after and before you go to the grocery store. Just pray. God, lead me, guide me. Pray and be obedient. Talk to God and listen when he talks to you. Go. Build up the highway. I'm going to do this quickly, but we need to build bridges. People, there are, there's a gap between this world and the kingdom of God. And we need to build bridges. Close the gap. Fill in the potholes. Make connections. That's what we're doing with our serve events. We're seeing lives transformed. He is in the process, Sarah, of transforming not only buildings, but lives, as you've seen. Remove the stones. This is the one I like, the parable of the sower. is not so much about the sower or the seed, although it is. The variable in the story is the soil. That's the variable. The sower is Jesus. He's good. He's sowing all the time and he sows good stuff. The seed hits life too. The, the variable is the soil. We need to be about soil preparation in people's lives. Removing myths and misconceptions and misunderstandings and offenses and problems and hurts and failures. Whatever is the thing that is the roadback, the stone, the barrier, we need to remove it so people can make their way to God. Raise a banner, lastly. Lift him up. It means lift up a standard or a banner, a flag or an emblem, something for someone to follow. This is the very clear question. When you go, go in a way that when people follow you, they find Jesus. We can make people disciples of ourselves. We can make people disciples of an organization but we've even heard that there's been different organizations they've gone, people have gone, and, and different organizations provide organizational and logistic structure. But we go because we follow Jesus. And we follow Jesus in such a way that when people follow us, they find Jesus.